Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, we're just going to jump right back into this bad boy right here. We want to sketch the graph of the function y equals 6 over x minus 2 minus 3 using transformations, and we want to identify any important characteristics of this graph. Now, for visualization, you guys will see that I have y equals 1 over x written in blue right here. We're just going to remember that this is the parent graph, or this is the base graph that I'm going to be using to draw my newly translated graph. Of note, and one thing that we always need to look at when we're shifting these um, rational functions is right here, looking at this, I have my vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Here, I have my horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So when we're looking at these graphs and when we're translating these graphs or transforming these graphs, one of the things or probably the biggest thing that I usually do is I shift my horizontal and the vertical asymptote. And I call this moving the crosshairs. It's exactly like if you look at the dotted lines, what we've done is we've created a crosshair shape. So the first thing that I always set out to do is move the crosshairs on my graph. My vertical asymptote was originally at x equals 0, as again we see right there. Now, what's happening right here is I'm shifting it two units to the right, because we have that x minus 2. So if it originally starts off here at x equals 0, and I shift it two units to the right, that means that my vertical asymptote is just simply going to be x equals 2. So we draw that in right here, and again, I apologize about how my lines are not the straightest right now. I guarantee you that as I keep on doing this, I will get better. Horizontal asymptote. We see that I have shifted three units down, thus my horizontal asymptote shifts three units down from y equals zero, which will give me y equals negative three. And again, right here, I'm just going to draw my horizontal asymptote in at y equals negative 3. Now, something that is usually very, very good to do is to get my x-intercepts and my y-intercepts to just get a good picture or a better picture of what's going on here. And it's always a good idea when we're sketching graphs to include a couple of points. So, my x-intercept. My x-intercept occurs when y equals 0. So looking at my original graph, y equals 6 over x minus 2 minus 3. I set y equals to 0, and I get 6 over x minus 2 minus 3. <clears throat> the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add the 3 to both sides, giving me 3 equals 6 over x minus 2. I multiply both sides by that x minus 2, which will give me 3 bracket x minus 2 equals 6. From here, I distribute the 3 onto the x and the 3 onto the negative 2, giving me 3x minus 6 equals 6. My next step is adding the 6 to both sides, plus 6, plus 6, and I get 3x equals 12, or x equals 4. So that tells me that my x-intercept is going to occur when x equals 4. Going on to my graph, in a black dot, I'm just going to put that x-intercept on there. My y-intercept occurs when x equals 0. So my y-intercept, and I'm just going to quickly erase off this y equals 0 part right here to give myself a little bit more room to write. So my y-intercept occurs when x equals 0. So we look at this, y equals 6 over x minus 2 minus 3 y equals 6 over 0 minus 2 minus 3. 6 divided by negative 2 will give me negative 3. So I get y equals negative 3 minus 3, or y equals negative 6. So my y-intercept occurs at y equals negative 6. Again, 
I just draw that dot on right there. So sketching my graph, I'm going to be taking this blue graph that you guys see and just sort of mimic, mimicking it with the transformations. So it comes there, it approaches that horizontal asymptote, goes through that point, approaches that vertical asymptote, and again, we approach the vertical asymptote and we get that curvature and we approach that horizontal asymptote. Now, for the domain and the range, the big thing with the domain and the range is we just have to look at the values that we're not including. Since I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2, I'm not including that value. I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 3, so I'm not including that value. Other than that, this graph exists everywhere. Um, what we'll do is we'll use set builder notation. So my domain, I have x, where x does not equal 2, and x is in the set of real numbers. And then my range is going to be y, where y does not equal negative 3, and y is in the set of real numbers. And thus, this question is done. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll be right back with the next question.